Well, everybody, good morning. Welcome to session 39 of our verse-by-verse -verse study through the book of Genesis in our virtual life Bible study here at City on a Hill. My name is Pastor Derek, and as always, welcome in. Glad that you're here with us this morning, this afternoon, this evening, whatever time it is, wherever you are. The important thing is you're here and you are ready to study God's Word. God's Word never returns void. And uh, it is always a good investment of your time and your attention. And uh, this morning is absolutely no different than any other study. It is going to be a lot of fun, a lot of information. We are picking up at the end of chapter 47. We're going to move all the way through the end of chapter 49. So we're covering quite a bit of territory today. The reason I chose to do this is because um, the scope of this study is really all one topic. Jacob is at the end of his life. If you remember uh, at the end of last week's study, in session 38, Jacob dies at 147 years old. And uh, as I mentioned last week, what happens is uh, we, we, we kind of learn that he passes away, and then the end of 47 through 49 is sort of a flashback of the last little bit of his life, a really important moment at the last portion of his life right before he passed away. When... Um, when they settled in the land of Goshen, after Joseph um, brings them into Egypt and secures them land to live in during this, this horrible famine, the text tells us that Jacob lived another 17 years after that. So the 17 years pass, and then abruptly he dies. And then now we're moving back to when he was alive at the very end of that to see some really uh, one in particular um, critical moment that sort of sets in motion the history of, of Israel. Um, in this study today, we are going to be focusing on how the, the so-called 12 tribes of Israel, um, how they develop, where they end up territorially, where do they end up in Canaan when they are eventually, when the exodus occurs, when they leave Egypt. Um, what happens to them? Where do they go? Where? So as they're living in Egypt and Goshen all the way up through the exodus, Jacob's sons, from remember he had four, there were four mothers that um, produced children for Jacob in his lifetime. If you remember, he was uh, first intended to marry Rachel. Uh, he was tricked by Laban, her father, into marrying her sister Leah. And then he worked another seven years to marry Rachel. And so he was technically married to both of them. Each of them had a handmaiden that became his concubine as well, Bilhah and Zilpah. And uh, all four of these women were producing children for Jacob. Rachel was the wife that he loved, that was the favored one. And uh, she only ended up producing two kids for him, Joseph and Benjamin. And so uh, chapter 48 starts with him giving a blessing to Joseph's sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Uh, Manasseh and Ephraim are the two sons born to Joseph in Egypt um, with his Egyptian wife. And Jacob, in this very strange, seemingly strange passage in, in chapter 48, assumes responsibility for them, almost adopts them as his own sons. Um, there's a lot of speculation over why this was the case, but, but the first part of 48 where he recalls Rachel dying, I think is indicative to why he brings Ephraim and Manasseh in. I think maybe Jacob believed that if Rachel had continued to live, she would have continued to uh, produce children for him. And being that Manasseh and Ephraim are the sons of Joseph, a son of Rachel, I think that, that Jacob feels a sense of ownership over them that he doesn't feel perhaps for his other grandchildren. Because they are grandchildren of Rachel, they are favored children for him. And as the uh, heir to the Abrahamic covenant, uh, able to bless in a way that no one else is able to bless. He feels like it's his responsibility to bless Manasseh and Ephraim as well. And, and they eventually become the two half-tribes um, in place of Joseph. We don't really hear much about the tribe of Joseph, but we hear a lot about Ephraim and Manasseh in the, uh, old, the rest of the Old Testament. And so um, 48 covers that blessing. Uh, he chooses... Um, to bless Ephraim over Manasseh, even though Manasseh was technically the older son. There's a little bit of irony there in that Joseph tries to correct Jacob from doing so. And Jacob says, look, you know, uh, Manasseh is going to be a, a great nation as well, but Ephraim 
is, is going to be the one that rules over him. And uh, rules over him, he does. History tells us that Ephraim, Ephraim's territory becomes uh, a, a really, really important place in eventually what is known as the northern kingdom of Israel after the kingdom splits between Israel and Judah. And um, Ephraim's territory uh, encompasses Samaria. Uh, it, it encompasses a couple of other really important Israelite cities in the northern kingdom. Uh, Ephraim is, in fact, in Isaiah chapter 7, Ephraim is used interchangeably with Israel, with just the people of Israel in the northern kingdom. So it, he was a obviously very blessed individual, and his tribe became a very important part in Israel's history. Manasseh has uh, a role as well, but just not as big of one. But there's irony because Joseph is trying to correct Jacob from blessing the younger over the older, when the reality is Jacob was the younger, and he was blessed by the older. Isaac was the younger, and he was blessed over the older. And Joseph was the youngest of all the brothers, and yet Jacob favored him the most. And so it's, it's almost like Joseph has forgotten that. It's a very strange um, sort of taste of his own medicine, if you will. Uh, chapter 49 then turns to Jacob and his sons, and he uh, both blesses and seemingly curses a couple of them. Uh, Reuben, in the beginning, gets a you know not great shake in terms of of um, a blessing. He is actually, his birthright is taken from him and given to Ephraim and Manasseh. Um, Reuben is sort of cursed or laid low because he ends up sleeping with one of his father's handmaidens. And because he did so, she was no longer uh, pure to go back to Jacob. And he saw that again as a loss. Um, offspring were a big deal in the ancient world. And it also could have been seen as him trying to sort of usurp his father's authority. Either way, Reuben does not get a, um, a clean blessing. Simeon and Levi are two other ones that don't get uh, great treatment. And um, it has to do with their revenge of the rape of their sister Dinah in Shechem, the village of Shechem. And they are seen as overly violent people. Not only did they kill everyone in the village, but they even they even hamstrung the oxen, like they, they were killing oxen. I mean, they soaked that city in blood. And, and we talked about that in that study, the, the rightful anger at such a gross injustice as, as rape. Um, but for whatever reason, Jacob saw their spitefulness and their revenge at another level. And um, so that is also not good. The rest of them I'll have you read through. I'm not going to cover all of them here in this video. Um, some of them are, you know, fairly straightforward. Some of them are a little more important. Obviously, Judah is an, another, you know, really important tribe. I give you some of the territorial um, geographic locations of where they end up after they come out of Egypt back into Canaan and why some of those territories were more important than others. Some of them I don't give you territories because they, they really were of no significance. I've included some... Um, descendants from some of these tribes as well. For example, um, Benjamin uh, produces King Saul, uh, who is the first monarch of Israel. Um, incidentally, the apostle Paul, who was called Saul, was likely named after Saul. One, because he was the first king of Israel and Saul came from a very religious family, but two, because Saul was also from the tribe of Benjamin. Um, Ephraim, for example, was particularly loyal to Saul's uh, monarchy and had a hard time accepting David as the king. Uh, Judah was actually the only tribe that came to his aid and accepted him, indicating again Judah's prominence as the southern kingdom eventually. Um, the reason Ephraim was so loyal to Saul is because Saul, again, was from the tribe of Benjamin. Ephraim is a descendant of Joseph. Joseph and Benjamin were the two brothers of Rachel. And so there was a kinship there that was stronger than any of the other tribes. So there's a lot of little cool things like that that I've tried to give you here. It's, again, a very informative study. And uh, I think, you know, again, um, an important study as you go forward, reading other parts of the Old Testament. We're going to be studying Amos next. You, you get an idea of how some of these other pieces fit together. And so just a really important study for you to uh, engage in. Um, we have one more study after this. Session 40 next week, we're going to finish Genesis, and then we'll have a wrap-up where we talk about some of the takeaways in Genesis the following week, and then the week after that, we'll do an introduction to the prophet Amos. So lots on the table, lots to discuss. Hope you enjoy your time. Hope you enjoy your group this week. Um, the Zoom classes are, are so good. They're so important, and um, 
So engage in those, plug into those. Some of the uh, Bible studies are going to be coming back, at least in a hybrid format, in person this Sunday. If you're a part of one of those, then um, look forward to seeing you if you're coming back. If you're not a part of one and you want to be in an actual, real, like in-person, incarnational study, let me know and I'll plug you in with one of those uh, groups in person. You can join one of those groups. It'd be a a great time to plug in. So uh, I haven't announced this to the whole church just yet because I've been kind of waiting to see how the groups formulate. I, I don't want to announce it and then there not be any major groups to come to. And I also don't want to flood them with new people. Uh, I want to make sure that we can handle, the infrastructure can handle uh, guests. But I'm hoping within the next couple weeks to start announcing that and putting, putting that out there. Also, if you are interested in learning more from me, uh, I am going to be starting a new class on October 28th called Cults. We're going to be discussing some of the uh, both ancient and mostly modern Christian, so-called Christian cults, um, the heresies that they perpetuate and some of their practices and how to identify what a cult even is. And so I think it's going to be a really informative and fun study. That'll also be here on YouTube and also in person starting October 28th, 6.45 p.m. in the Worship Center. You can come, wear a mask till you sit down, and then uh, I'd love to have you in there in person. Uh, hope you're having a great week. God bless you. See you next time.